The events that uh, followed the arrest of former President Jacob Zuma have been defined by many as a watershed moment in South Africa's democracy. The former president reported to a correctional facility in Escort last week to start his 15-month prison sentence. Since then, the country has experienced a spree on, of unprecedented violence, rampant looting of shops, uh, shopping malls by citizens and acts of arson. Now, former DA leader Helen Zilla penned an open letter expressing em empathy towards uh, Jacob Zuma, the person, and not necessarily the former president. In the letter, she details her several encounters with the former president in settings that were warm and, in, and humane. We speak to Helen Zilla about this uh, and get more insight. A very good Good morning to you. Thank you so much for your time. Before we speak about former President Jacob Zuma, let's speak about the situation that we've seen transpire throughout the course of the week. And uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa going as far as acknowledging that his government failed to foresee the re recent threats to national security. What did you make of this uh, really chaotic and uneasy, emotional draining um, week that we've seen as a country? Well, it was horrific, and Paul, it was really horrific to see it go from Sunday to Monday to Tuesday, the escalation of the violence, the incredible destruction of property, and worst of all, the loss of over 200 lives. And as we saw it escalating, and as we saw the police and the army totally out of control at the beginning phases, we saw citizens, civilians step up to defend property, to defend lives, to police their streets. So it was an unprecedented scene, and the president was quite right to say the police and the army and the intelligence services particularly were caught completely unawares. Now that is a huge admission in a democracy. It shows you your intelligence services aren't working, because if you're going to jail a former president with widespread support, especially in KwaZulu-Natal, you're going to have your intelligence forces on the ground telling you what you're likely to expect. So that is a huge failure. And after President Cyril Ramaphosa admitted yesterday that they were caught unawares and taken by surprise, well, it's time for him to clean out the ministers responsible from his cabinet. Ayanda Ndlodlo, the Minister of Intelligence, Becky Trele, the Minister of Police, at the very least. Now, you, you speak about um, really just reiterating what John Stienhuisen was saying, that there needs to be some sort of cabinet reshuffle when it comes to the sort of strategy that uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa should be taking. But also, that speaks to the internal battles, the factional battles within the ANC have been even more exposed throughout the course of this week. Yes, of course, I'd say what John Steenhuisen said, because he is the leader of this party, and I take the lead from him. And that's his position, and that's all our positions. I think it's a very sensible position. And yes, indeed, Paul, this is the ANC unraveling. This is just one massive seismic event in the unraveling of the ANC, which has been going on since Bantu Holomisa left in the 1990s. So slowly, surely, and now much more quickly, the ANC is unraveling, and this is part of it. Now, when the ANC sneezes, South Africa gets double pneumonia, and that is what happened this week. And, I mean, you, you essentially speak about, um, you know, the, the impact of jailing a former president. I mean, you may make mention of it as you and I speak now. And that impact of, of jailing a former president has had uh, major repercussions and spilling out into a situation that uh, was never quite anticipated by the ordinary South African. What does that then speak to when it comes to the, um, you know, the standing of the former president, especially as you also penned a, an open letter speaking and describing a man that you say is warm and humane and reached out to you at a time where you also needed that support? Yes, indeed. Uh, Jacob Zuma has a lot of followers, but it was interesting to me that the uprising was essentially confined to KwaZulu-Natal and key major urban nodes in Gauteng. Now, that is a very interesting development because it seems to suggest that where there are large concentrations of Zulu-speaking people, the president still has a very strong 
following. Now, obviously, all those people who went out and looted shops and burnt property are not necessarily supporters of Jacob Zuma. Many of them would have been opportunistic criminals getting in on the act and not wanting to miss out on free goodies when the opportunity arose. So much was opportunistic crime, but it is interesting to see where these flare-ups happened that opened the door for this opportunistic crime. So I think we need to understand it in that context. Jacob Zuma does have a following. He was the leader of intelligence for Mkonto We Sizwe back in the armed struggle. And he definitely has networks. He's built them up all over the place. And those networks sprang into action for him, especially the MK Military Veterans Association today. Now, you know, you've got to distinguish between Jacob Zuma, the politician, and Jacob Zuma, the human being. And I'm afraid I know that's controversial. I have been Jacob Zuma, the politician's biggest critic. In 2009, I said, stop Zuma. And almost the whole of South Africa, or the DA and I, not only myself, the DA and I, our slogan was stop Zuma in the 2009 election. And I don't know if you remember, Paul, I don't know if you were old enough to remember the incredible negative reaction we got. You know, oh, this is totally negative, and you're not reading the room, and uh, this is tone deaf, all the old things that they always say about mm. us. But having analyzed the question, we could see that Jacob Zuma was going to take South Africa into what we call locust years. You know, the locust years of the Bible, seven good years, then we, we had seven good years, now we are going into seven bad, bad years. And we could see that happening before our eyes, and we warned South Africa about it before the time. So I was very fearful of a Zuma presidency, given his history, all he had done in the past, and given the allegations against him. You know, many, many, many counts of corruption, fraud, money laundering, racketeering, all of those things that were unlawfully withdrawn by Mokotevi Mpshe in 2009 so that he could become president. And we saw all of that. We said this was very, very grimly for the future of South Africa under a presidency. And that's what we tried to warn South Africa, no, don't let it happen. So tragically, it did happen. And during all of those years, I got to know Jacob Zuma, the human being, as well as the politician. I always opposed the politician, but I was always surprised at how warm and humane he was towards me personally. And when I was at my lowest ebb in my own party, he reached out to me. I was quite amazed. He reached out to me and said, he knows how terrible I must be feeling. And he wants to say that although we're political opponents, he wants to tell me to just be strong and have courage. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And I was absolutely amazed. And at his lowest moment, when he was in prison, I wanted to say to him, be strong. But uh, as, as you say that, I mean, uh, just judging from the reaction, the, 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 the tongue, the, the ready, um, you know, slamming that you've received from writing this letter some people say you know they understand the part where you speak about Zuma as a warm and humane person but uh, the the place of controversy comes as the reaction speaks and and says that your letter has a lot of racist undertones and that you essentially insinuating that traditional African cultures cannot comprehend the, the notion of constitutional democracy. And also speaking about how you, you're essentially saying that Africans are inherently corrupt. What do you have to say to, to some of that criticism as you go into the bulk of your, your opinion piece? 99% of the response I got to that letter was very, very positive, including from people in the Jacob Zuma Foundation, amazingly. I was also amazed by that because I've always opposed them. So 99% has been extraordinarily positive because they haven't twisted it. They haven't misrepresented it. They haven't tried to distort it for their own interpretations. I was talking about Jacob Zuma, the traditionalist. To extend that to all Africans is mad. That is racist. Jacob Zuma is not representative of all black people in South Africa. And to assume that 
That is the racist part of it. Now, people try to argue that South Africa is naturally a constitutional democracy. I've just seen what's happened in Swaziland, which I know is another country, or in Eswatini, as we call it now, and with King Swati. He is an absolute monarch, and that is very much part of the traditional systems we have. At last count, in 2018, we still had 13 kingships in South Africa and over 800 senior traditional leaders being paid from the public purse. So nobody can generalize about all Africans being part of a constitutional democracy. And no one can generalize about everybody having imbibed and being able to default to constitutional values. Many, many people still live under systems where they account toward the chief and their headman. The headman and the chief don't account to them. That is the very opposite of a constitutional democracy. And if anybody wants to deny that there's an uneasy tension between constitutionalism and traditional systems, they are living in cloud cuckoo land. That is the true analytical meaning of what I said. I did not generalize about Africans. I did not generalize about black people. I would never do such a thing ever because I believe in judging individuals on their own individual basis. However, if we want to be honest about the problems we face in our society, we have to look at the difficult alignment between traditional systems and modern constitutional democracies. And if people want to deny that, then you've got a lot of problems going forward in South Africa. It's very interesting that lots of people read my post on Facebook, but I went into this in great detail in my book, Stay Woke, Go Broke. So if you want to take a look at that, you can go and see how I unpack it in that book. Just because Brian Rostron wrote one piece in the business day does not mean to say the overwhelming response was negative. The vast overwhelming response was positive. And if we don't want to understand the underlying tensions and misalignments in South Africa, we're going to have a lot more of these things and we're going to be very puzzled by them because we're not analyzing to the heart of the matter. And I really hate it when people who claim to be progressive twist everything that I say and turn it into generalizations about black people, which they aren't at all. I judge each single person as an individual, as I do Jacob Zuma, and I don't make broad racist generalizations about them. The, the timing, perhaps, you know, um, I mean, I'm also quite surprised that you say that 99% of the people who received your letter think it was positive because looking at social media and uh, the reactions that we're getting there, someone even commented to say that the, the piece looks like it was written in 1925, that they're shocked and perplexed by some of the notions and how you intertwine some of your arguments as you pen that letter. But uh, do you believe that... Uh, you know, the timing was correct for you to, to pen this letter. Well, if you are surprised that you say that 99% was positive, go and look on my Facebook page. Go and look. And then count up the hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands by now, I haven't looked, responses I got. And do the maths and see that 99% was positive of all races, of all races. I mean, you see this, Makaiza, obviously one can always expect him to be negative and a couple of other people, but who cares? I'm not out there to get likes. I'm not out there to get hearts on my Twitter account. I'm not out there to get any. I'm out there to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. And I always, only, ever tell the truth as I see it. Obviously, I don't have access to the huge truth of humanity, but if people want to with me i'm always ready to debate yeah i'm always ready to see things differently 
The reason I ask you about the timing, pardon me for, for interrupting, the reason I ask you about the timing of you penning this letter is that, um, you know, looking at what transpired with former President Jacob Zuma, um, it, it was a huge step on the constitutional uh, and well as the, the, the constitutional battle that's happening and the muscle of the judiciary system and a lot of the the critics were also speaking to that point saying that uh, you know it, it was a time for the judicial system to shine and and here you come in with this letter with a lot of controversy well did you read the letter it wasn't actually a letter it was a facebook post but anyway i, I did a facebook post and i said he deserves to be in jail this is a big victory for the constitutional democracy it's a big test i said all of that I said all of that right up front because I said, I know that certain people are going to come in here, are going to twist my words, are going to take them out of context, are going to manipulate them. I know they always do, always. And I said right up front, if you go and read that Facebook post, Jacob Zuma deserves to be in jail. It was a very important moment for South Africa's constitution. I said all of those things. And I said, in the context, looking at him as a person and not a politician, mm -hmm. I'm wishing him strength in his darkest hour. That's all. So there's no point in Paul manipulating it. Go back and read it and be honest. Yeah, the, these were not my personal uh, reflections, I know. Zilla. That's these why were you just go the, back and read it. Absolutely, I did read it, go. and and I, I also drew my own conclusions. But thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you to, for responding to that. Uh, it, it was nice to see you after not seeing you for a very long time. And uh, thank you for waking up with us on, on the weekend report. Uh, Helen Zilla, the DA's uh, federal chair, bringing some insight on the controversies of a letter well, a Facebook post that was put on her, her Facebook page, penning her opinion about uh, her relationship with former President Jacob Zuma, describing him as a warm and humane person, and also receiving a lot of backlash for her part about the constitutionalism. But uh, that, of course, uh, is uh, something that you can continue to reflect on.